Loredana? How do I pronounce it? Polezzi. Polezzi. Okay. Polezzi, yeah. So, Loredana, you're Italian. I am. Um, not yep. from Venice, but originally from Tuscany. The, okay. the Venice is one of my cities because I studied here for a year okay. and I was for a while director of the Warwick Center in Venice. So, I, oh, I, I okay. consider it one of, right. one of my cities okay. by election. Oh, all right. But you're working now not in Italy. Where are you? With no, I am at Cardiff University, so mm -hmm. in Wales, mm -hmm. Great Britain. And before that, for a long time, it was at Warwick University. Yeah. So um, in England, still in Britain, but in England. So I crossed the bridge and went to Wales uh, okay. four years ago. Four years? Four okay. Years ago, and you're what then? Your position there I am Professor of Translation yeah. Studies. Mm -hmm. um, I work mostly with uh, postgraduate students, so mm -hmm. the MA Translation Studies that we have there and also uh, to an extent with the undergraduate degree that, um, that we have which uh, combines okay. languages and translation and PhDs of course. And you're doing research? I'm doing research uh, all of the time, uh, although I keep thinking that at present um, for the past few years I think I always think that I've spent probably sort of I don't know maybe 70% of my time goes on research but most of it is other people's research uh, okay because you're I, editing because though, I supervise you? because I edit so I'm, I'm one of the editors with Rita Wilson um, from oh. Monash University of the translator yeah, which is one of the main uh, which is journals. one of the journals um, one of the one of the Routledge journals yes. um, in, in translation it started its life of course as an independent one but it's part now of the, the Routledge um, and um, so, yes, between the editing, between supervising MA and PhD research work and all the rest, but my own research, um, so it's evolved over the years, but I've always been interested in uh, travel and translation. Um, and for a long time, people would look at me and say, you know, two such disparate things, how do you keep them together? And in my head, there was always a logic to this. I always thought of translation and travel as, well, as two forms of. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly the word became so popular, two forms of mobility. So I now say that I work on translation as a form of mobility, and I work on mobility, linguistic, geographic, social. Um, so that takes you be beyond linguistic translation yes. or text-based translation? Yes, um, so my, my background is very much in, you know, well, I was, my first degree was actually between Venice and Siena. I studied at those two universities. It was a degree in uh, lingue e letterature yeah. moderne, yeah. so languages and literature. So I'm very much grounded in philology, okay, so not good old fashion. No, no, let's go. When you were yeah. 23, 24, when I was 23, where, where were you? What were you doing Well, then? 23 is the, the big divide, uh, in a sense. 23 is the year that I moved from Italy to Britain. So at 23, I finished my degree um, at Siena uh, in languages and literatures uh, with a specialization in English and Spanish and French. And, uh, and literally, I, my graduation day was the 7th of July and on the 4th of July, I had a letter from the ministry, the Italian ministry, that said that I had a post as a language assistant at uh, what was then Coventry Polytechnic, at one of the now a university, but in, in, in the UK. So, um, so yes, at, at 23 I, I moved to, do, to the UK and, um, and, and I continued studying. So I, I started teaching, teaching Italian, although um, I, I'm not a specialist in Italian studies nor a specialist in Italian um, language in terms of um, pedagogy or, or anything, but I started teaching Italian and in the meantime I continued to study in the UK. So I did an MA and that MA is an MA in Applied Linguistics. Okay, where did you do the MA? Uh, in, in Warwick, right, at Warwick okay. University. This Warwick so. is in Coventry. Warwick People is in Coventry, get yes. yes. And go to Warwick Castle. Thinking it's no, there. exactly. <laughs> that was the first thing we always had to say to people when they, you know, guests coming to Warwick, we had to say, whatever you do, yeah. don't go don't to go Warwick. Warwick. <laughs> Which is, of course, where <laughs> Just, I went. Yes, never <laughs> mind. Um, but no, I did, I did an amazing so thing. you then moved from there to Warwick? 
<laughs> yeah, well, I was I was at Coventry University, and then I I, I, I made contacts during the year that I spent there with Warwick University, which was a leading. That's with you know, Susan it's a very, initially not with Susan. Susan was actually the ex, the internal examiner of my MA, but she was in translation, and I was okay. working in the Italian department. Ah, so you you moved from Italian to translation. Exactly. Yeah. So well, but I your moved, training in my, my my training is in modern languages. Good. So you're not a translation person. My training is in modern languages. Then I moved to Italian, and then I moved to translation studies. And the reason why I moved to translation studies was, well, two things. One, because I wanted a way. My two passions were always both linguistics and literature. And I wanted a field that allowed yeah. me to keep those together. And translation studies was that field. That's like most of us at that period. And that's what I you wanted. Know, I wanted something that allowed me to do that textual yeah. work, that that grounded me in the language. And to be honest, I, I'm also you know a bit of a language nerd. I, I love languages. If you left me to my own devices, I probably would just learn languages okay. all the time. And I love the sound of languages in particular. So recently, but working in in uh, sub-Saharan Africa more frequently, I've, I've learned to click. I haven't learned, there. I've been, been work, doing a lot of work in particular with Namibia, now I'm beginning to do work with Zambia as well, and I have contacts in Uganda that we're trying to, Whoa. so we're trying to in establish. In translation studies or? Well, good question. Um, there is, as you know, now in, in Africa, there's a growing, in the African continent, there's a growing, um, sort of field of translation studies and there's a growing number of colleagues who specialize in that but in a lot of these countries there is still no um, no degree for instance no specialist training in translation and interpreting so one of the things that we're trying to do is work with colleagues who have an interest in translation but they may themselves like you know like, like me like many of us not necessarily be translation specialists to begin with but who have a strong interest in that area to establish precisely programs that will train. And that's you by yourself or you have it or it's, um, that is serendipity. When I talk about these things I have a slide that says serendipity and how to find it. <laughs> because when I moved um, from uh, from Warwick eventually, so I spent more than oh, 25 years I think at, at, at Warwick. And then when I moved to Cardiff, one of the, I moved with a large project um, to which I was attached, a collaborative project, which was on, on modern languages and the transnational and translational rethinking of modern languages. Mm. And when I moved there, one of the people I was introduced to was a professor of anesthesia, a phenomenal woman, um, who has this large engagement project, um, which is sort of built and sponsored by, by uh, Cardiff University. Mm -hmm and uh, had just started the year before with the University of Namibia. And I just asked the question, because I, ask, I like asking questions, I asked them, so Namibia, I know a few things about the country, I know about the German past, I know it. I know it's a very multilingual country, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a seriously multilingual country. You're doing work there, how do you deal with it? And she said, okay, you're coming to Namibia. <laughs> so since then we've been doing, I've been learning it in order to met, and. Um, and, and it's really opened up a whole other series of perspectives, so it's continued to shift. So my work, which had started on the literary side of translation, and increasingly um, still through writing, but through translingual writing, migration had taken me to words, um, questions of translation and, and migration in particular, translation and, and the social implications of, of that. And it's now increasingly going also um, towards the, the, the interface uh, between translation and multilingualism uh, and, and what that means in the mobile world. So that, that's what I'm up to at present. Right. And that, that's the, the so route. is that the kind of research we need, do you think, in terms of, Would you like to see more people doing that sort of research? Look, I would like to see people doing more research in all fields of translation studies. And I, I think... Um, I think we are at a crucial point in translation studies because, in a sense, the, the field was established and it's still a young field as a field. I mean, translation as, as, as a practice, translation even as something theorized is much older, but as a field, it's still relatively young. There's a generational shift, and in the generational shift, we must continue to maintain. Grazie. We must continue to maintain the variety of what we do, I think. And, and I. Um, 
I sometimes worry because of institutional, not intellectual and, and epistemological issues, but I worry that institutionally we may be pushed back into into narrower definitions of what it is okay. in terms that we do in translation studies. So I would like to see as much variety as possible. What I really, really think we must engage better with um, is telling others what we do. It is yes. still shocking yes. Yes, yes, yes. how many people, when you talk about, and this is true of languages as well, you know, I've always also worked, I've continued always to work on the interface between translation studies and modern languages, it's a big disciplinary field. And I, I do strongly believe that the two need to be together. So for instance, if you find yourself having to explain to people that you can't actually have a very strong translation studies program without having a strong base of languages there. Um, but it's a misunderstanding. Um, there's, there's this narrow understanding of what languages, language learning and translation uh, yes. does, which limits what we do, but also limits what the practices that we study and, and we also teach do, to a very instrumental conception and you know we've been just listening to a phenomenal lecture by Louise at Montplogo we know I was talking about the same yesterday I'm sure you'll be talking about the same on Friday language is always political and what we do is eminently engaged with society with social change with um, with development with social cohesion with all of these things but we are not good at telling the story. Yes. And so the number of times that it's like, oh, so you just teach languages. A, the just is wrong in itself because just teaching languages, try, have a go first. But also what we do is so much more complex. So the key word and the, the thing that probably has been the biggest shift for me working uh, more internationally than, than ever and working in developing countries is this real sense, so the keyword has become sensitization. And I keep going around and saying translation and interpreting are too important to leave them only to the specialists. We need to educate the users of translation and interpreting as well. So for me, that is also absolutely key. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much.